just to get started, so again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to jump in. But let's just get to know Amber a little bit more, which is she's at Fabricating Fringe, which I love that Instagram name, by the way. How did you think with that? Um, well, starting that up was very sporadic. Um, just I, I was feeling so inspired after I started wearing toppers in 2016, very beginning of 2016. Mm -hmm. um, I had tried a few basic wigs um, in 2011 and forward, and I loved that, um, but I had never tried, like, you know, a lace front or a, a mono part or a mono top or anything where I can really get in there and, like, create a style and mm -hmm. wear it as if it was my own. And so I just, like, I was so inspired by that. I thought, okay, I want to share this. I started following everybody on Instagram that I could, whether it be a hair sharer or um, a shop, a store. There wasn't a ton in 2016. Um, that. In that, in from that point till now, it's exploded. There are so many girls sharing, and I love it. There's so many people, you know, promoting and inspiring and um, removing that stigma and just making it fun and normal. But I just I wanted to come up with something creative. So I was sleeping one night and I'm like, okay, what do I do here? I, I kind of fake my hair. It's faux hair, you know? And so <laughs> fabricating is, you know, kind of faking it till you make it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then of course I wanted it to kind of blend together. So fringe, I don't know. It's just weird. I'm weird like that. No, I love it. I love everything that like it feels like it sounds like I like the two apps. I love things. Like that. <laughs> the it's two weird. apps. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Okay, so we're getting a lot of guesses that you're wearing rock me. So don't give it away, but just say yay or nay. Nay. Okay, it's not. And rock I still me. can't see myself. So if I look like crazy, no, let me know. No, you look great. I love the little uh, accessory that you added. I'm all about adding accessories. You guys probably know <laughs> from reading the blogs. But I think it just really adds kind of that personal touch. And I think sometimes uh, clients or customers or wig wearers, they think that you can only wear the wig and you can't do anything else with it. But it's like you can put it in a pony, you can add clips, you can do a headband, hats, you can do all that. Okay, well, let me get started with the questions. We're kind of getting off topic. But oh, so, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell us your name and where you're from. My name's Amber Perkins, and I am from Lehigh, Utah. Utah. That's where I live currently. Um, but yeah, just all around Utah, all through my life for the most part. I hear it's really pretty there. What was that? I said, I hear it's really pretty in Utah. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. So there's mountains all around me. Um, I, I think for a while there, I took for granted the, the beauty that you see every single day. And I was like, oh, I need to get out of here. But I just, I'm really appreciating um, how gorgeous it is especially this year um i think because we're so cut off from the things that we're able to do mm -hmm. um being out in nature and in those mountains it just brings me so much peace and joy so um, yeah okay so now let's get into your um hair loss journey your story i know you shared it with me and it's very touching <laughs> but just let us let everybody else know kind of how everything started and how you got to where you are today. Okay, where do I start? It's it's a long story for me, and a lot of people do know it. I've shared it here and there on different platforms and that, but um, long story short, I've always had thin, fine hair from the time I was a baby. Um, I didn't really, it didn't really dawn on me that it was thin when I was a young child. That's not what most young children focus on. Um, it wasn't until my teen years that I started having difficulty achieving the styles that I wanted to do. And then my hair also didn't, um, it didn't respond well to the various things that you could do like chemically, whether it be perming or anything, it would just fall off, it would break. So I, I thought, why are my bangs not growing? They're always really short. Um, I always had breakage. And then I just, I just couldn't do so many styles I wanted to do. It was it was really hard as a teen because I'm like, why can't I do this? So I started um, actually using little pieces here and there that you could get at Sally's or whatnot. Um, they had 
those clip-in ponytails or the spiky scrunchies. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember those bumpets. Um, <laughs> yeah, so anything like that. And then um, I started beauty school when I was a junior. And I immediately got into um, using extensions. So extensions were a big thing for me. And that was my first aha moment with alternative hair because it was a miracle. I could have the hair that I naturally have, had never, ever had. I remember being in beauty school and taking a field trip to a couple wig stores. Mm -hmm. And I was they showed us the realistic scalps and um, just everything about wigs. And I was, I was intrigued. I was really intrigued. But at that point, when I thought of wigs... I associated wig wearing with those who had, you know, medical hair loss mm -hmm. or whatnot. I didn't think it would be something that I would ever pursue. Okay. Um, but at that time, I was very much into extensions and add-ons. Um, then as I got older, I started having kids of my own. I had that postpartum hair loss. I found out that because of my already very, very thin, fine hair, when I would go through a postpartum shed or anything like that, it would, it would drastically change how much hair I had because I really didn't have a lot to start out with. Right. And so I got into hair fibers and things like that, fillers, anything that could give me volume and give me the appearance of thicker hair. By the time I had my third baby, uh, that particular mo shedding moment, was so bad that's when I drove myself over to a local wig store and bought two budget wigs and I I was like oh my gosh I have hair I have a side swept bang well you know there were so many things even though they were I think they're 50 bucks a piece really affordable um basic cap but I did a lot of like this I, I put on a lot of accessories I actually wore the wigs in the same color as my bio hair and I would integrate my biological hair with the wig, much like people do with toppers. So I would twist it back and do all sorts of styling to make it work for me. And I loved it. I loved the ease, the convenience, but I didn't tell a soul. I didn't tell a soul for a really, really long time because of that stigma around it. But I loved it. And I always got compliments when I put them on. And so and you, you talked a little bit about, too, you've pretty much tried everything out there, like the fibers, the sprays, mm -hmm. the pieces. And I'm, still, I'm still an advocate for, like, hair fibers and thickening. Anything that you can do to help you achieve the hair uh, that you want and make you feel more comfortable, those that have beginning stages of a hair loss, if they throw in some hair fibers and that works for them go for it. Or like there's the root touch up powders. I still use a lot of those when I wear wigs um, or toppers and I want my biological hair to show the hairline or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I think they're really helpful. So, um, but so that was around 2011 that I got my first two wigs. I had never tried a topper. Um, it was 2016 that I purchased uh, my first topper online. And I was like, okay, I'm never going back to wigs. That was at, at that time. I was like, toppers all the way right you know it gave me that feeling of an extension um it was just an extension of myself it blended in with my hair I loved that um through sharing I've become um I guess you could say so much more open about it and come to terms with it and learn to embrace it and also love it I love the convenience I love that wigs and hair toppers or whatever you put on really um, can just add that much more to your personal style. And <clears throat> I feel like it's a way to express yourself depending on, you know, the way you want to look, just like anything else people use to um, adorn their self or style the, their yeah. self. Just like lashes or nails or uh -huh. makeup. It's totally like that. And I think yeah. as more time goes on, which is, is really nice and exciting, is that it's more and more acceptable. Celebrities are being more open about wearing extensions and hair pieces. A lot of them are super open about wearing wigs. It's really not this, you know, taboo thing nobody wants to talk about. It's really just an accessory. 
Um, and I know you said that your first two wigs, you got them and you didn't tell anybody, right? So you were just very private about it. So how do we get <laughs> from there to seeing your Instagram, seeing you, knowing you, talking to you, you're so open and so confident, you change up your look, you're, you're not hiding from it anymore. So how did you get from there to where you are now? Um, I think really just letting the cat out of the bag. I, I, I remember having that topper on and we went out to dinner with uh, my in-laws, my husband's side of the family. Mm -hmm. I have a very inquisitive sister-in-law who notices everything. The majority of the general population do not notice your alternative hair. They don't. But she's one of those people that is like, wait a minute, something's different. Something, you know. And she asked me, she's like, do you have extensions? What's different? Your hair looks so thick. And I was like, yeah. I just kind of brushed it off. I was like, yeah, I have extensions. And then I brushed. I just did not want to even breathe a word. I didn't want to talk about it. But I had this bubbling feeling of like, I need to say something. I want to say something. This has helped me so much. Um, I don't want to hide it anymore. I have like all the respect and understanding for those to choose to keep it discreet because that's why we, a lot of the times why we won't wear them and we choose specific brands and styles and, and that because we, we want to keep it on the down low. Right. That's why we want them to look real and everything. But for me and my personality, I feel like being open about it, um, helping others in turn helped me. It helped me reach out and, um, meet people in similar situations it helped me realize that it's so common um it empowered me because in through these years i know that it's helped others and empowered them to either start their own accounts or just heal themselves and find that confidence and knowledge that they're beautiful and worthy with or without it um it changed my perspective in the way I am even at home because I used to hide my hair even from my husband. I'd get in the shower. I felt like a drowned rat when I'd get out and I'd either put on a headband, even sprinkle in some fibers on my wet hair and put it up in a top knot because if we were going to go watch a movie, don't you know? Um, and I had been, I was just all bare faced wet hair <laughs> and that because I was embarrassed of my scalp showing even though he knew it, I just, I didn't want to face it. And I didn't want anybody else to face it either. Right. Um, I was embarrassed and very, um, what's the word, uh, sensitive towards any comments, even if they weren't said in a negative way. So my, I have three daughters. They all have beautiful long hair. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, but at one point, my husband was like, oh, you're just jealous of them. And I, I, you know, that was dur during a very raw time in my life where I felt very insecure about my hair. And I was hurt. I was like, why would you think that I would be jealous of my daughters? I want my daughters, my own flesh and blood, to have what I didn't have. However, like if, you know, we all deal with things, um, nobody's exempt. If they happen to deal with and find hair in their future, I know that they'll be covered. Like literally and figuratively, they'll be covered and they're going to be okay. So like, I just, I feel like sharing, really sharing and connecting with people who understand me and I understand them and helping others has really built me up and it's brought me a lot of peace and contentment. That's awesome. That's amazing too. And you said something interesting the other day when we spoke how you felt more comfortable kind of opening up to Instagram or like to the world strangers than you would to like people maybe you've known your whole life that are close to you that see you every day. And mm -hmm. I would have thought it would be the other way around, but it totally I know. makes sense because you're going to connect with people that understand you and you don't have to really like see them face to face. Mm hmm. And then I know you discovered this amazing community of wig wearers and supporters, like, you know, women that support women, you know, hair loss, um, people with hair loss that are supporting other people. So it's amazing. It's a really, really amazing thing that I know social media has its negative side and it's really ugly side, 
but then there's this like beautiful flower that comes from it, which is like the community and the support and things that you maybe wouldn't even find like in Utah. Like, I'm not sure if you have a lot of friends that wear wigs for fashion or just wear extensions or change their hair color, depending on where I, you live. It's funny because a lot of people have come out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. People who wanted to try it or we were interested or they dealt with in hair and they didn't have, they didn't know there were options. Right. Um, and they were like inspired that, you know, they went for it or they, they started wearing a wig or they reached out and wanted to try one on or asked for recommendations of local places and that. So the whole thing has been such a positive thing for me. Um, last year, I would say 2019, there was a moment because of the social media thing that I thought, oh, this is to heck with this. This is for the birds. I don't want to deal with opinions from others, mm -hmm. any sort of backlash. You know, that's what you get when you put yourself out there for the world to see. Mm -hmm. um, but the amount of good and the positive and the blessings that I feel have come from, like, putting myself out there outweigh that. And it's, it's also allowed me to just, um, yeah, just see all the the good and anything any thumbs down on uh youtube or whatnot it doesn't even phase me anymore because bottom line is it's worth it and i feel like it's more of like a passion and if you're passionate about what you do it's it's what you should be doing so definitely okay so i'm gonna go through some of these comments i saw that rising tide 11 she says that you're wearing beautiful choice so <laughs> Renee. She's right. Yay. Yep. <laughs> so you are right. Uh, it is, she is wearing beautiful choice and she's going to try on some other amazing styles and completely change up her look. A and this might be hard later. since I can't see myself. <laughs> I know. It's so pretty though. What's that color? It's that the Auburn one. I think it was. So this, out is, was some. this is K337H. Yeah, I love that. It's like a natural auburn, like a ginger mm -hmm. tone. It's so pretty. And I love the little headband. Oh, thank you so much. This one actually has a, a left monofilament part. Uh -huh. oh, I like that on this one. Um, and the little bang. I don't know. Does this have a... Oh, yeah. It does have a lace... Yep, it has a, a lace, lace Yeah, a lace part. It's really it cool. Has when you oh, yeah, out, no, like, yeah, when you change out to the next one, we'll look at the inside of the cap. Maybe, like, right before you put on every style, we'll just look at the caps and kind of and figure them out. But um, since we are kind of talking, I see some comments, too, about just everybody kind of being inspired by your journey, by others' journeys, and just kind of sharing, being open on social media. Um, what advice would you give to somebody maybe that's not as confident, maybe is struggling with their hair loss, maybe accepting it or just being open about it. What advice would you give to that person? <clears throat> I would say give yourself some time because healing and acceptance isn't, it's different for everyone, you know? And also everybody's circumstances, who they have for support, um, everything is so different for everybody. So I can say for me and my personality and what helps me, um, getting out my feelings and not bottling them up is a way for me to find acceptance and, um, healing. So by whether I had a ton of people influenced by my page or one, I think it was also like an outlet for me because I expressed myself, my frustrations, my triumphs on the page. If somebody has a journal or, you know, they have somebody to talk to about it, they reach out and meet somebody in the community who feels, who understands. I think that can help. Mm -hmm. um, and then just time, um, find something that makes you feel beautiful, you know, and there, some people hit the jackpot right at the beginning. They find a topper or wig that makes them feel alive, beautiful, wonderful, like themselves, or totally different. They might go and find something that they wouldn't have ever tried it, had it been on their own natural bio hair, but they feel amazing. So I think when you find something that kind of changes your outlook, um, I that is another step 
towards acceptance, um, self, self acceptance, self love, and, um, just coming to terms with it. Um, even though like I, you know, talk about all those options, I do believe it's like an inside job. You can put a bandaid on it. You can put your wig on, you can put your makeup on in that, but feeling okay with yourself from the inside out is needed. Mm -hmm. But I think that by finding that wig and becoming, or that topper or whatever it may be, and knowing that it's there and how great it makes you feel, that can be a great starting point because it gives you that comfort. It gives you that knowledge that you're, you're fine. You, you have that option to feel like yourself and, you know, um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's different for everybody. I, there's some gals who shave off their head and they, they don that everywhere and they're so confident about it. So I say to each their own, what works for everybody. There's some who will wear a different color every single day. And they're like, I wear wigs to everybody. And then right. others who don't even talk to their, you know, in-laws or, um, extended family about it. Nobody knows. And I think whatever is most comfortable for each individual, um, but yeah, I would say just continue to, to be yourself and share. And I feel like um, just being involved in the community and knowing that you're not alone and it's so common, that helps. Definitely. I love that. So don't, there's no need to feel pressure to like really, you know, come out and talk about it or be really open about it. But I think some pointers that I'm getting from you and from your experience is to really just like reach out through social media and like follow these empowering women that are so confident and open about it and take your time. Like whatever works for you and your situation is going to be what's best for you. Mm -hmm. I'm just scrolling through these, these uh, comments to make sure I haven't missed anything. No, Especially, I don't think my side is, it's not, the comments aren't moving. And then of course, where my face is supposed to be is blacked out. So <laughs> yeah. And for everybody watching too, if you guys want to bring the comments down so you can see Amber better, just double tap at the top of the comments. Um, I think it'll do double tap. Yeah, if you double tap, it'll bring them down and it'll only show two, <laughs> like the most recent two. So um, just if you guys want to see a little bit more of her, especially when she starts trying on the, the different styles. But for those that are just joining us, she is wearing beautiful choice and a gorgeous auburn color. We love it. Um, and we see through your page, like so much of your personal style. Like you always have the makeup done right. You have your accessories, your outfits. You guys should your... see me <laughs> most days <laughs> with five kids. Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> oh, I, I only have one. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Kudos so to all the moms. <laughs> everybody's like, oh my gosh, your makeup's always on point and your hair's on. I'm like, no, usually I have a ball cap and stretchy pants and maybe a little bit of face, but that's it. <laughs> that's so I love to get ready though and, and all dolled up when I do my reviews or when I'm going out, but I'm all about all natural, you know, to run around and clean house. So <clears throat> I think we're all like that right now, especially with the pandemic. So yeah. Okay, so what are your favorite brands? I know you have a hard time answering this, but what are some of your favorite Such brands? a hard time. I have people message me and they're like, should I go for this or that? And it's really hard for me to pinpoint and say, ooh, go here or go buy that one. Because like I said, it's everything. The healing journey is individual. And then what works for one person is, is so different too. Like there's been things I've tried and loved and other people's like, they're like, mm -mm, no way. I, my experience is not the same or right. I didn't like the way that clipped in or, you know, and that goes, I think that's why reviews are, are great. Um, because you are able to often find the same wig on multiple face shapes, different people, different, um, colors on different sh like shades of skin and that but yeah. even at that I think people will go and watch a review or go look at photos and they'll say oh I want that wig I want that style expecting it to look exactly the same and we just you know sometimes it's like a match made in heaven and other times people are super disappointed um whether it be like if you have a shorter forehead or a really long one or a longer face shape, I just think that um, I, I was reprimanded one time because I had tried on a wig 
and did a review and I liked it a lot. And somebody else was like, well, I got this wig and it looks like crap and done it. And I'm like, sorry, that was your choice. You know, I'm just putting out my information based on my experience. experience and the way it looks on me. And then you, you choose for you how you'd like to. And from that point forward, it's, it's their responsibility. And, um, but I just, <laughs> it's so hard. I feel like there's such fantastic brands, um, stores, options, like, mm -hmm. and that's the hardest part for people who are new as well, is they're like, where do I start? Because right. it does feel like a jungle out there. They don't even know where to go first. Um, but I, I really do like the stretch caps as far as, um, uh, affordable. I think I really love promoting the statements because I'm blown away by the prices. Some people feel like they can't get into alternative hair. They can't wear wigs because of the price. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I love that part of the statements collection. Um, like, I mean, look at this. This is so pretty. And they're, they're just really fair, um, affordable prices. So that's one thing I love about the wig company and the statements collection. And while we're talking about this one, uh, you're wearing Beautiful Choice. It's hand tied. It has the monofilament part, the lace uh, front mm -hmm. part, and it's one oh nine right now on the yeah. com. That's that's excellent. Plus, everybody on our live, you can feel free to use my promo code, which is ask CJ twenty for twenty percent off. I'll put it in the comments. So it's like one oh nine plus twenty percent off. That's incredible. Yeah, you guys feel free to use the coupon. Um, I just commented it. It's ask CJ 20, um, for joining us. That's your <laughs> treat, your gift. Um, but I'm so excited to see the other styles you have too. I know you're not really, um, you don't necessarily shop by brand. Like sometimes wigs, it's not one of those like, Oh, I like this designer. I'm just going to get everything that they're coming out with. And I kind of go with their style and their vibe. I'm like all over the place. <laughs> Are there certain things that you look for in wigs though? Do they have to be maybe a certain length or a cap? feature or color i've reviewed i've reviewed shorter um styles because i feel like it's important to you know get this the color and the the style out there so i'm all about experiencing something that i may have not reached for for right. instance this one's really cute what one is this this is essence right the little short one if i'm right i think so let me look yeah, Essence is the shortest. Yeah. So this is Essence in more of a, a gingery orange. Not orange, but yeah, blonde. It's kind of strawberry. And um, I'm more into wearing shorter styles, pixies and that. Um, <laughs> this is so weird. But if I'm at a, a lighter weight, mm -hmm. um, when I, I, I was telling you guys the other day, tw COVID, I'm going to blame it on 2020. But I feel a little thicker right now. And so I reach for, I definitely reach for longer styles because I think that they help elongate and um, frame the face. Right. But, um, and I think I tend to reach for longer or mid length to long styles in general, no matter my weight or whatever, because that was something I struggled to achieve. And I, you know, all through my life, my hair wouldn't grow. I had breakage. It was thin. It was fine. And so I wanted the mermaid hair, or the, the dream hair that I couldn't mm -hmm. have. And I never dreamed of chopping my hair off or doing something like a pixie, even though I would see people with them and love the way it looked. I just was like, okay, I struggle enough to grow my hair out. I ain't touching my hair. I'm not cutting it. You know, I'm not doing any of that. Mm -hmm. Now that I have the option to try these short, cute styles, it's so fun to yeah. experience that. But I think that I tend to gravitate towards like mid length and a little bit longer. Well, let's look at some of your favorite styles. I think we're kind of at that point of our lives. So let's kind of see you try some different looks and hopefully your mirror is handy. I know you can't see yourself, um, but go ahead and try on a different one. Which one will you try on next? Okay, well, I have a short one. I just recently reviewed some fun, colorful ones um, by Hairdo available at the Wig Company. 
Um, and I love the styles of these ones. They're, yeah. The styles themselves are something that I would gravitate to. The colors have been a blast. Um, do you want me to go for this, like the statements, or do you want me to try hairdo? Let's do hairdo think? last. Um, okay. let's, let's look at essence because I know that's the shortest. Okay. One. Have. Okay, this is going to be interesting since I can't see myself. I know. You can't see okay. myself. I'm so sad. So if you see guys, if you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> if you guys see me looking off to the side, that's because I'm looking in my handy mirror since I can't see you guys. Yeah, of course. So the one that you're wearing... Um, is Beautiful Choice in the K337H, which I love that color. It's like such a natural, if you're a natural redhead or a colored redhead, <laughs> it's so flattering and it works with like all skin tones. It's not too like orangey, but not too cool tone. This one right here? Natural. Yeah, I love that color. I love this color too. I love the dark auburnish shade to it. Yeah. I, I love red, but I think I'm more of a fan of the, the deep, rich reds, more so than the strawberry, although I, I think strawberry is really pretty. So those are kind of two red versions. But what's the, what's the color that you have in uh, Essence? That one is <clears throat> F2629. Okay. That's a pretty color, too. Mm-hmm. I love this, these colors because you can definitely see, I don't know if you guys can see on this live up close, but the variation of color mixed in, it's just really, really pretty to see the blonde and that kind of red tone. Can you see that? It's I don't really know. Yeah, we can see the tones. It definitely looks like a strawberry blonde. It's considered, um, it's in the Auburn family or in the red family. Uh, which I love because the last one was too, but you can see the contrast of like a darker red. And then this is kind of more of a, like a strawberry blonde. If you kind of lean toward a blonde, you still want red. So that's really great. So let's see what this one looks like. All right. <clears throat> oh, and this also has a lace front. Oh yeah. Let's yeah. look at the inside. If you can put it like kind of a little bit further back. Okay. So that's a lace front and a mono part. What I really mm -hmm about that type of cat feature is that you get the natural part and the natural hairline but since it's not a uh, hand tied all over the price is still lower usually right. not slow um so this is essence and right now it's on sale for 119 on the wigcompany.com and then of course you guys um i mentioned earlier you can use my ask cj20 coupon for an additional 20 percent off oh i love that one i love the highlights I'm going to pin. I'm outside, so if people see me you know, changing my hair, <laughs> they'll have a good show. <laughs> the highlights are so pretty, which that's what I love, too, about the price points for most, for the most part. I feel like you kind of get what you pay for with wigs most of the time. I mean, if you buy a wig that's under maybe a hundred dollars. Usually the colors are maybe just a little bit more solid. Um, you don't have as many cap features, so it's not gonna look as natural, but with the statements line, you'll still see those salon inspired colors. You see the highlights, the lighter Look at that front. lace front. Yeah, Can you see that? so good. I mean, I've never- is so current too. Like right now everybody's doing kind of that lighter bang. It's really mm -hmm. cool. I, I've noticed that with statements, I mean, the, the, the lace fronts are fantastic. And like you said, the color, the dimension is awesome. I've received, I've used, I think my first couple of wigs were more of that solid, um, like a solid color. And to me, it, it just doesn't look as natural. Exactly. Because even, <laughs> even if your hair is, let's say it's one color, it's really not one color. I mean, everybody has highlights and low lights and variation in their hair and the statements line you'll see with this style that amber has on it has not only does it look like you went to a salon and you got your hair colored you got some foils you paid a lot of money for that cut it's like perfectly blow dried it's it's crazy because like with a wig you can just shake and go and you have that complete look 
And again, mm -hmm. it's 119 and then use my coupon and get an additional 20% off. But I mean, you can't even really go to a salon and get your roots done for that much. No way. <laughs> yeah. And you talk a lot about kind of the convenience of wigs and, and something I was going to ask you too, is if let's say from today to tomorrow, you didn't need to wear wigs anymore. Would you still wear them and why? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did talk about that. And I, I think if I, I, people have said, Oh, you know, you can grow your hair back this, that, and the other, I might be able to stop a shed. I might be able to kind of thicken up a little bit, but I naturally genetically have thin, fine hair. I've had it my entire life. And even if I, you know, miraculously overnight, a miracle happened tonight and I had mermaid hair of my own, I think <laughs> just because of how crazy busy my life is, I'm running around constantly. The convenience Exactly. is amazing i love the choices i love switching it up um also because i like switching it up it's common for hairdressers to want to switch it up but right. because of my bio hair and even if i had stronger biological hair it's so damaging to do those kinds of changes so frequently and so if i want to go pink you know or purple like these fantasy wigs, fantasy wigs it, it, the process to achieve those colors and even maintain them are it's it's pretty extensive on your hair and exactly. it can really fry it so why not throw on a wig um, not, not only that but even if you have a lot of your own hair your hair might not like you said it might not be able to be colored pink or it might not be able to get layered and look pretty without a ton of work and styling and prep and product and money so yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna look at some of these comments here. We have Denise uh, West. She's asking, how does it stay secure? And that's a really good question. I think if you're new to wigs, um, you kind of see them go on, but you wonder, does the wind blow it off? Is it gonna fall off? But what I love about wigs is that they're, they're made to conform to the shape of your head. Um, and you feel, I always compare it to wearing kind of like a, like a skull cap or like a beanie where it's not going <laughs> to blow off in the wind. It's not going to fall off. If you pull it, it can come off, but a wig feels really secure and it's adjustable. I don't know if Amber, you can grab one and just show those yep. straps so you can loosen it or tighten it. So if it feels like it's either riding up or not feeling secure, um, you might need to loosen it. Maybe it's too tight. Or if it feels like it's too loose and it's shifting, just tighten it and it'll kind of get a little bit snugger. Also, there are ways that you can add even more of a secure feel. You can use um, the hair grip, which is like the little velvet band that keeps it really comfortable and secure. You can sew on clips. Um, there's a lot of really cool things you can do to keep your wig secure. But they do, they, once you have them on, especially with the wig cap and your hair's pinned in, if you have your own hair under, you feel like it's there. It's going to stay. <laughs> and it's if you're going to be doing activities that, you know, you're nervous that somebody's going to snatch it off or it could blow off or whatnot, you can use adhesives, like, she's, like she mentioned, clips and that, so you feel more secure. There's ways to really tack those puppies down and make them feel really nice and tight. Secure. Do you feel, feel uh, or you do pretty much agree that for an everyday kind of regular basis you don't really need the extra mm -hmm. clips or adhesives or tapes if you do have maybe or you're a little bit more active I think that hair grip is a really good option which is the velvet because it really does keep it secure so that's yeah if you guys want to look that up too it's called the hair grip okay so let's go on to our next style which one are you going to put on next Okay, so this one, I love the style, and I actually really love the color, too. When I first looked at the color, I was like, okay, I, I'm aging too fast already. Why, why am I putting on gray? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you're wearing and what color, so I'll pin it here. Oh, the one right now, or this one? Whichever one. Yeah, the one that you want to put on next. I have, okay. I have you down for the other. We have S. Okay, this is Summer Heat. One of my favorites. I love some heat. I, I love, love it. It's and literally the perfect mid-length cut. Like if you don't want to be short, if you don't want to be long, but you want kind of shoulder length, it's the perfect style. It's, it's such a, I love it. it you'll, you guys, if you've seen my review, I have reviewed it. But here we go. What color are you wearing? <clears throat> it is... F oh wait that's essence sorry 
um, F860. So this is considered a gray. Mm -hmm. But I love that you're, you're so diverse with your colors. I love that. that I want this summer heat in more of a brunette or even a blonde. I loved it in the brunette. I actually, I think when I did uh, my takeover, I did, um, I did the color shown in the photo, I think on my mom and she just loved it. We added a little bit of weight. What I love about, um, summer heat and i always think you you hear the name summer heat or heat just remember that it's heat friendly so you can style it with your curling iron you can take out your waiver you can use a flat iron and make it super super straight uh, you can trim the bang a little bit always remember you can customize them you don't have to style it with heat but i love that that's an option mm -hmm. uh, one of my tips too like if i was to recommend the summer heat um, to somebody and they like to wear their hair wavy or they like to change up their look a lot, I would get two of them and have one waved because it's going to stay that way even after you wash it, which I love that about Heat Friendly Synthetic. You style it one time and it's set until you style it again with heat. And then you can have one that's straight. Maybe they're the same color. Maybe one has a little bit of a highlight. Um, but remember that that's an option too. Um, summer heat right now is on sale for 109 um, and that one also has the lace front and the mono part. Is that right? Look at, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. We'll look at I it didn't look take it off, but it looks like but, it. But it does have this lace front that's really great. It looks so good. And you can wear it off the face. I, I never love that to... color because it's kind of, I know. it's like a different take on gray. It's very, very current. So I think if somebody's well, wanting it has to a brunette. Gray, yeah, it's it like a mix it. of brunette and then the the gray tone. I love that. So that is F860. So eight is like a warm medium brown. And then mm -hmm. 60 is a silver white. So it's such a cool combination. I think that's so like current. I think it looks very natural, like the way somebody would gray, you know, in a Not very. Like that, it kind of, it, it looks too like a, a salon like a inspired gray. Like it looks like uh -huh. put foils. The ends are a little bit tipped, kind of like balayaged. It's so pretty. It really is. I was blown away, away by this gray. I didn't think I would, it would be something that I would be okay with. <laughs> I was fearful to put it on because I didn't want to age myself. Um, but I really, really like this gray. I hope that if I go gray, it looks like this. <laughs> and yeah. if it doesn't, I'll just get a wig. <laughs> I think it honestly, to me, in my opinion, it can definitely give off the natural gray vibe, but it, to me, it looks very, very on trend, mm -hmm. very, like salon, like you had a really amazing colorist kind of whip that together. It's really, really pretty. My brunette is a light, a light brown, kind of grayish, mousy brown. So sometimes I'll pull the, um, the perimeter just down here with a wig if it matches okay mm -hmm. and i'll i'll use that to my advantage so i can tuck and it looks really natural so yeah. i feel like with the brown in this in this gray tone it kind of blends it totally does and it goes really good with your makeup and your brows too that's oh. what i love too about like i mean we're looking at you switch to completely different like from red to gray which is the opposite of the color wheel <clears throat> and you still look super put together your brows match with every color so I think maybe like a tip with the makeup and the brows is you, your brows can always be kind of your natural hair color and then just kind of play around with the hair colors of the wigs. You don't necessarily have to match your brow to the wig color. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you probably agree on that. So we have a question on the beautiful choice. How do you care for a monofilament wig? Um, my personal tips with monofilament is you do want to be a little bit extra careful in the areas where it's hand tied. Don't pull. Don't pull, like if you're adjusting your wig, don't pull it from the lace front. Maybe adjust it from the ear tab so that you're not pulling anything that's really delicate or hand tied. But other than that, you're going to care for it just like any other wig. You can still brush it, comb it, 
you're going to wash it, just let it air dry. It really doesn't require anything out of the norm. The lace front's already all cut on all of these styles, so you don't have to cut it back. And you can use a tape or adhesive, but you don't have to. It's not required at all. Do you have any tips, Amber, with uh, monofilament wigs or like any care tips? Um, well, I hope you guys didn't see me earlier. I was adjusting and I did kind of grab it up here. Um, it's advised to use your ear tab when adjusting just because it, it is hand tied and more delicate. And so if you're yanking up here, um, that can, you know, pull some of those, those hand tied areas. So like you mentioned, being gentle with it. Um, uh, also I'm trying to think. This is more for human, but I was taught um, to not put conditioner around the knots because it can loosen them. Mm -hmm. um, so you can be mindful of that when you're washing and conditioning um, human hair with your hand tied areas. Um, and then using like a wide tooth comb on your um, fibers can be more of a gentle way of um, dealing with those synthetic fibers. What, do you do you agree with that or definitely agree um, the conditioner comment is something that we like focus on so much when we talk about washing a wig uh, remember conditioners are meant to undo knots so these hairs are individually knotted so you don't want to get the conditioner anywhere anywhere near the base of the wig so focus kind of mid shaft to the ends um, but that's a, a great tip and totally forgot to mention that earlier. I feel like you can use a wet brush um, on wigs. I think they work really well, especially when you first get them out of the box. They have the yeah. flat zigzag part. I think with a, a nice gentle brush, something like the wet brush or just something gentle and you could really brush I did that use that this. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> but I'm more, I'm gentle. I don't rip through it. If there's, if it's really tangly, just like your bio hair, I'll start from the bottom and move up and kind of hang on to the cap, especially where it's hand tied in that, because you'll, you're going to protect as you're getting through those knots, you're protecting that area, just like you would, you know, your scalp when you're pulling exactly. them trying to get that out. So. I, will say, I will say that for any wig or style that has curl or texture, I would use a wide tooth comb versus the brush. And that's just to preserve the texture, not necessarily to protect the cap. Um, mm -hmm. We have another question. Does monofilament feel like real hair? So just to um, get a little bit more in depth with that question, monofilament actually only refers to the cap construction. And it's, and it's actually the material that's used. Um, if you have one there, Amber, can you show just the cap of like a beautiful choice or essence? So monofilament is the material that looks sheer um, and it's almost like a little bit of a net or like a lace. Mm -hmm. um, and what they do is they use all every, uh, they use all the little openings in that material to sew on the fibers. Um, so when you look at that on a scalp, it actually just kind of disappears with any skin tone, whether it's dark, medium, or light. And so it actually looks like a scalp when you look down into the wig, as opposed to a wig that doesn't have monofilament will have pre-teasing where it looks like somebody took a comb and they tease the root. Like you don't see a scalp, you don't see the cap, but you see a lot of teasing. Um, and also with monofilament, I love that it gives you styling versatility because the hair has like a 360 degree motion. Like you can comb it and brush it how you do your own hair, but it also has natural fullness and volume because it does not have pre-teasing. So it does look very much like your real hair up close. So if you're, if you're new to wigs or you're maybe a little self-conscious of somebody looking at you very closely, uh, monofilament and lace front is, are great features to look for in a wig. So you can see like really close the, the mono front. So I don't know. Do you need me to show? I don't know if you guys saw that because I don't know what I'm showing. <laughs> <laughs> we saw it. It looks amazing. And any questions that you guys have to feel free. My Instagram is at the hair you love. Amber is at fabricating fringe. You can DM either one of us or even at the wig company and ask any of your questions you have. I know we're, we're running out of time. Instagram is going to kick us off. So throw on one of the fun, like fantasy hairdo wigs. Okay. Do you guys want pink or purple? Everybody choose pink or purple. What do you want to see? I have pink out. Should I just put on the pink? Yeah, let's go for pink. Okay. Just going to kind of 
detangle this a little what bit. What style is that one? This one is Pinky Promise. Okay. From Hairdo. I must have just thrown her in the box after I wore her last. I love the that you saying pink because we had to pick pink anyway. We're like seconds well, away from getting kicked off. Everybody's saying pink, so. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, how much time do we have? We have just a couple of minutes. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, stay three. Until, we'll stay on until it get, we get kicked off. But any last minute questions while Amber is putting on this style, you guys feel free to comment. And again, follow us. Uh, we'll be announcing the giveaway on our story and Amber will do hers on her story since we're kind of out of time, but we'll post that later today um, and keep you guys posted. Thank you again, everybody that entered the giveaway. It's so exciting. We're going to keep Thank doing you guys. We're going to keep doing more hair and happiness. I can't wait to show you guys who our next guest is. Um, yeah, let me put our Instagrams on here so you guys can see. But feel free to ask me any of your way questions. And I am more than happy to help. Fringe. That's so pretty. That's Pinky Promise, and that's by Hairdo. I'm going to pin our Instagram handles, and Pinky Promise right now, I love that for, I love that for a lot of different reasons, but for one, it's definitely, definitely not like a, you went to Party City and you got like a costume wig. It literally, mm -hmm. with the roots, with the base color, it literally looks like somebody who colored their hair pink. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love that about this color too. And then the pink itself, just like with these other colors we talked about, it actually has quite a bit of dimension in, in the tone. Exactly. Like you have your light pink, you have more of a, a hot pink in there. Uh -huh. and, then, and then you have that root. I love it. And the root ties in for any skin tone because if your hair is naturally dark, maybe it's hard to wear a blonde shade. So that would be one of my kind of closing tips is if you have darker natural hair, um, you know, by nature, then go with the brooded color. And if you yes. have lighter hair, the rooted colors still look really natural because it adds that little bit of depth. Um, but just to close off, Pinky Promise is 118 on sale right now. And we have so many hairdo fashion kind of colorful wigs on thewigcompany.com and they're always coming out with new styles, which is really fun.